Good morning everybody, this is your Buffy Stewart speaking. Welcome to the 742 from Manchester to Brighton. We have a Buffy available today situated in coach C, which is now open for service. We're serving tea, coffee, sandwiches, cakes and pastries, and books and magazines. Also in the Buffy today you will find a 40 year old man. He's easily recognised as he's wearing a red uniform and a tie which he doesn't like wearing and pulls at all the time. He's not wearing a wig, it's just that his hair's a bit flat pack. Good morning, can I help you? He's paid to smile at people he sometimes doesn't like. Please don't be unpleasant to him because he will whisper nasty things about you behind your back. He's got large black bags under his eyes through lack of sleep. The big bags have got little bags clinging on underneath, partly due to the fact that he likes a good disco and can never resist any offers to get on down under a sparkly disco ball. The trousers are a sad shade of navy polyester, the sort you can use in science experiments about static electricity. When he worries about something, he digs a sharp corner of tooth into his nail and picks and slides it down, taking thin, reddened layers of cuticle and skin with it. Best before May 1988. There are two Janes. The Jane you get depends on the type of day I'm having. On a bad day, I'm a well-lagged old boiler of a certain age. I've got ironmongery on my legs, my skin's blotchy, my teeth are uneven and my hair's greasy. I'm probably frowning because it's a bad day. Catch me on a good day though, and it's another story. I'm a well-upholstered, voluptuous Dawn French look-alike. I have a glint in my eye and a big smile on my face. My hair is fabulous, thick and shiny, darling, and my skin is positively glowing. I look ten years younger. People tell me I'm stylish and attractive, and I do try to make the best of what I've got, given my size and having to wear calipers and surgical boots to get about. I'm not fussed about wearing fashionable shoes. I just think about all the money I'm saving. A little girl asked me recently if I worried about being stared at. I said, when people stare at me, I always think it must be because I'm just so gorgeous. My hair's like spaghetti and it's always in style. People tell me I have a winning smile. I've got lovely long lashes and chocolate brown eyes. I'm exceptionally skinny because I hate eating pies. And sometimes my ears go bright flaming red. So hot you could cook a scrambled egg. My hands are skinny but surprisingly fast. No wonder at chopping I'm never the last. I have chicken-like legs and knobbly potato knees. My feet are bony and smell like cheese. My skin is all tanned and I'm of average height. Tall, dark and handsome, just what the girls like. I look so fine and I don't want to boast, but I'm almost as tasty as a Sunday roast. Grams. Millilitres. Degrees Celsius. They're all words you might have heard before, but how on earth do you take them and put them all together? To make a delicious finished product. The key to it all is a recipe, a set of directions for making something fantastic from basic things or ingredients. And that's why I've come here. I really fancy inventing a recipe, and because bananas are so gorgeous and good for you, I want to make my own brilliant banana muffins. So the first thing I need to do is decide what I'm going to need. 
Most cakes use roughly the same ingredients in their recipe. Sugar, eggs, flour and butter. For our muffins we also need baking powder, bicarbonate of soda and buttermilk. And last but not least, my magic muffin ingredient, a bunch of bananas. Right, I think I've got everything. It's time to split. Get it? Split? Banana split? So now we know what we're making and what our basic ingredients are, that means we can write down the first part of our recipe. The name of our recipe is Brilliant Banana Muffins, and the list of ingredients looks like this. Plain flour, sugar, baking powder, bicarbonate of soda, eggs, buttermilk, butter, and of course, bananas. So what's the next part of the recipe? The method! And this is where it gets really exciting because now we can start mixing and mashing. Okay, come on, action. Here's what we need to make our muffins. Will you write it down for me? 300 grams of plain flour, 120 grams of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, two eggs, 150 mils of buttermilk or yoghurt, 90 grams of melted butter and four bananas. Time to start cooking then. If you could, sift the flour and the sugar and the baking powder together. Now what it means by sift is, you just spoon that into there, give it a shake and it just makes it nice and fine. So the first thing we need to do is sift the dry ingredients into a bowl. And that's half the muffin mixture done already. OK, guys at the board, next step is to combine all the wet ingredients. Now our wet ingredients are eggs, buttermilk, or you can use yoghurt, and melted butter. Work it quite hard so it's all combined, just really get in there. Come on mate, work a bit harder. Now all the wet ingredients are combined, what we do is we add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and mix it all together to make our cake dough. As this goes in, Scarlett, just start mixing it really quickly so you get it combined. A minute that it's kind of all come together and you can't see the flour and you can't see the mix all together, then it's ready. That's your basic muffin mix, so whatever flavours you want to put into it now, you can. And we're, of course, adding bananas. So I put these into the bowl, and if you could mash them with a fork, just really get in there with a the fork, and the more you mash them down, then the nicer it's going to be. That's it. Now the bananas are mashed, all we do is pop the bananas into our muffin mix and just gently mix them through, and we're ready to cook. So that's our delicious muffin mix. So guys, it's two spoonfuls of the mix into each of those cases. The final step, of course, is to cook them 200 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 25 minutes. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, yummy. Look at those. Oh. Now, while they cool down, let's just have a quick recap of our recipe. First, the title of the recipe, Brilliant Banana Muffins. Second, the ingredients. Now remember to write the amount first and the ingredients second. Third is the method. Now the method is a step-by-step -step guide which tells you what to do with all your ingredients. Well that leaves just one more thing to do. Come on everyone, dig in! Poetry for me is a way of making people laugh and it's a way of making people cry and it's a way of making life interesting and exciting. It means that I don't lose things that I'd lose otherwise. That's what I like about it. 
I've come to Manchester because it's an exciting city. There's lots happening in it, lots to see, lots to do. And um, the more things you actually see, the more inspiration you get. So it's a, it's a good place to be to write poetry, a city. I think the best way to find inspiration is to think weird, to not look at things and see them as they are. It's to find the unusual in the usual. I guess the most important thing about poetry is that it captures moments. It's kind of handy to walk around with a bit of paper in the pocket and a pen, because you get an idea coming into your head, but the idea will disappear really quickly. I think asking yourself questions is a great way to start a poem. And one of the ways that I often begin, the thought process which leads to a poem in the end. I wonder what she's thinking. I wonder where he's going. I wonder where he's come from. I wonder what all of these people are up to. How many bricks in that building? How long have they been there? So many people, so many nationalities, so many religions. What are they up to? They're walking, some of them are talking, they're eating, some of them are even kissing each other. Mm. They're shopping. Why are they shopping? What do they want? We don't know. In a poem, it doesn't matter. You make up what you want. Thought bubbles are a great way of organising your ideas when you're beginning to write a poem. You take one thought bubble, you write your main idea into that, you draw lines coming out from it, and you write other ideas that come to mind into those. Standard rose. Why is it called that? What's it doing here? Some of this might prove useful later, but I think it's useful to actually scribble it down now. Poems don't have to rhyme. Some poems are right rhymed, some don't. And um, I think it's interesting to mess about with both. But rhyme's not the most important thing in poetry. It's capturing a moment. Rap's a great way of pulling ideas together, and it's a fun way to do it. There are two parts to it. The first part is that it's got a beat to it. Four, four time. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. What you've also got is um, rhyming couplets. So, two words that rhyme together at a time. Uh, I was running. I'll change running. Um, walking. Walking down the road. I wonder if I'd run with road street one morning. Need something to go with morning. Can't think of anything. Let's change it, make it easier. Morning, simplify it. Day. So I was walking down the street one day. Um, something which will work with day. I was walking down the street one day, I just collected my weekly pay. I did not know what I would do, just a don't laugh, Mr. No, no, neither would you. I haven't been on a trip to space, but I've been to a city and it feels ace. Never been to Egypt, Timbuktu, never even danced with a kangaroo. Never walked along the wall of China, I can think of nothing that would be finer, but I've strolled through the city, seen its lights, I love to see those city sights. Shops with music, shops with shoes, shops to chase away my blues. People all rushing, traffic cops, tall skyscrapers and office blocks. I'm not here, you know, to lecture. Man, check out that architecture. 